Hey everybody, it's the Mad Hatter Shows podcast. We just randomly show up. That's what we do. Like it's a no rhyme or reason to it. We just show up and do the thing. I'm here. <laughs> I'm Neil Snyder. This is uh, Robert Sweaty Hands. Sweaty Day. Hands in the building. He's in the rotating co-host seat. And uh, we're here today to, uh, it's like an infomercial. We are uh, promoting Mad Hatter Shows events. Um, so some of you guys are like, why is this on my feed? You're probably coming on uh, Strizzo's page or you're coming on uh, Dustin Sims page. Or maybe it's one of the uh, one of the venues that's actually putting our stuff on. Um, we've got these cross posted all over the place. So uh, stick around. We're going to have a couple interviews today and we're going to plug some of the events that Mad Hatter Shows. We're going to have some fun gonna be fun yeah it's yeah gonna be, it's gonna be great good thing so uh sweaty hands we've had you on a previous edition you came back for more <laughs> you're the uh you're the guy that when i'm putting a, a show together mm-hmm. in a small town and we have the list you're always one of the first couple i was to stick to these small towns so you've i done appreciate the, it too you've done the tours uh winnemac indiana and monticello and and uh yes. crawfordsville and uh I took I took some head. I took some uh, uh, new comedians with me this time to see how they do it. They said, "How you do these little small places?" I'm like, "It's fun. Well, you can do this, and you can absolutely do big rooms. So if you do these little ones." Now, what I didn't know is that it was going to be clean. But luckily, I could do both. And I flipped when I got in. Oh, did I, you go clean that night? You didn't yeah, have to do well, that. Well, I thought it was kids in there. Oh, yeah, they didn't know they brought kids. Well, see, the thing was, it was a bunch of kids. Haas and uh, Jake Rubel. Both do clean anyway. That's what he told so, me. But but the whole plan was I thought there was going to be a contrast where Haas would do his clean stuff and then you'd go on there and you'd just dirty it up. And that's what I thought too. Wow. And so the comedians would be like, hey, there's kids in there. I was like, I can flip it. Yeah. <laughs> and and I they did. still dug it. I know that, uh, that the woman that owns uh, Tippies in Winnemac was happy with the show and then we're talking about coming back with a new lineup in the fall. So thank you for that. Uh, Sweaty Hands actually bailed me out. Thank Jake Rubel bailed me out. Um, by showing up with the the sound equipment and stuff because I was out in uh, in Wichita that night with Donnie Baker. So opening up for Donnie Baker. For Donnie Baker, we've been on tour with him. Shelbyville's so. favorite. The Sh- he's, they like him in Shelbyville. I don't know. Every time I meet somebody from Shelbyville and I tell them I'm a comedian, like, do you know Donnie Baker? <laughs> and they, I, I think they think that he's my next door neighbor or something. I'm like, yeah, I, I know him, but I don't know him, but I know his name. If there and, was a sitcom <laughs> where Donnie Baker lived next to Sweaty Hands Day, I would watch that. You know what I mean? Like that's like we're gonna have to put. We have it's to like do Archie that. Bunker and and, and uh, uh, the Jefferson George Jefferson living yeah. next door to each other. Uh, we can get that maybe the the tour schedule up here for Donnie Baker. Uh, it's on there. We we're in the, like the the early stages of his when I was a millennial tour. Yeah. So these are all the dates. I'd like to meet him though. Yeah, I we'll have to him. get you on a show with him. He's uh, so we we did the first so I can tell the people in Shelbyville. Hey, I met Donnie Baker. Yeah, yeah, I see that, what you love about it's him. It's like your background on your phone or some shit, right? That's, uh, <laughs> but you can look there. We've done the uh, the dates already in Kansas and Oklahoma. So the next shows that are coming with Mad Hatter shows, we're going to have him in Texas. Um, I'll be opening those in Lubbock and Amarillo. So those All are going right. to be at uh, MadHatterShows.com. If you look at the uh, the other dates that are on there, we're going to be in Wisconsin. We're going to be in Minnesota. We're going to be in South oh, Dakota. Coming back to Indiana, uh, that date on uh, Thanksgiving Eve is actually with the Pork Pistols, his band. So, um, the Pork can- Pistols. It's as it's as ridiculous as it sounds. Uh, they do like parody songs for like old metal songs. They shoot you with ribs. No, the the pork pistol is a reference to a penis, uh, Mister Hands. So that's uh, he talks about his pork sword, uh, this pork pistol that's in his pants. I've seen pigs. They mm. don't have big penises. <laughs> he's calling. He's saying it's made of pork. Oh, um, okay. It's a, it's a white thing. You wouldn't get it. Okay. High it. blood pressure. High <laughs> blood pressure is going to be in there. Okay. Got you. But, yeah, if you look at the uh, at the dates there for 11-24 uh, and for 12-3, those are with his band. And then the other ones are going to be stand-up. So, Donnie Baker, if you haven't seen him, he's he's a, a hillbilly character uh, that's a, a much different act than Sweaty Hands, but every bit is funny. So. Definitely know why they love him in Shelbyville. Does <laughs> he look like he lives there? <laughs> 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 yeah, my family's actually from there. That's crazy. Really? Okay, okay. Mm-hmm. So yeah, we're killing a little bit of uh, time right now talking about the uh, the shows we have coming mm-hmm. up. Uh, what do you have going on right now? Uh, I know you're working when you're when you're not doing stuff for me. You're still working. So what's up? I'm helping everybody. I got an open mic that I'm starting for the young comedians and help them because when I started there was no open mic. So you just had to get out of here and find out where it was a room where somebody was doing something and asked right. and begged to get on and that's how you did it. So. Easier today. They got YouTube and podcasts and do all this stuff, but 
Still, it's nothing like working a room. So I'm doing that, uh, doing church shows, doing regular shows. Yeah, I'm all over the place. That's actually how, the way I met you was. Um, I had just I'd either signed on, I guess, like I'd verbally committed to my first show Tana with B. Tana at, at Bentley's, <laughs> or like I, I started out doing a, an open mic there that was supposed to I thought was an all purpose variety show, and it was me and twelve rappers. That's a funny story. Wow, I we've gone over before. That's why but, I don't do variety shows. <laughs> exactly. Um, but then she put me on the hip hop comedy spot, so I think like I was on the next month's, and so I went to go check out the, the month before, mm-hmm. and it, you were like the emergency replacement, like whoever they had announced. But you know that's, was that's on what they do to me that's what everybody <laughs> called me it's like hey so and so canceled can, can you can you feel like i don't have a haircut or nothing y'all just want to throw me up there like i need i need you i'm like all right i'll, I'll come and i'll do it and so it was funny that i started doing my own shows like like that fall and we had the sweaty hands day at the crawfordsville bowling alley that's yeah, kind of how it started yeah. i was like i knew this guy he's funny and we put you on a on a show that was way too long you're used to doing those shows they're like a three-hour block you know a yeah. party that kind of thing but I remember we even had like a like an intermission at this place, and you ended up going on. Last, oh, I hate um, intermissions. I learned, learned not to, to do that now. Yeah, but, uh, because it changes the mood. Yeah. Well, then I learned too to start using like a a, a guy that that's not a build comedian right right after the break then too so it's like hey you know this guy's like warming up the crowd again you know because you don't want to put the headliner on cold after that but if I remember correctly. Uh, they liked you well enough that even though that was a two hour and 45 minute show it ended up being like a three hour and 10 minute show because you just started telling like every joke you'd ever heard of yeah you know? I, I, probably like, say, I probably did like three hours <laughs> myself <laughs> so yeah that's one of those things where you don't want to get off stage and he's he, he knows enough material to just keep going um i cut it short now though I don't, i'm not that long with it now I can I can go there long, but I don't. I'm like, you know what? I'm not getting paid for all that. And even though it feels great, I'm going to end it right about here. Right. <laughs> so future shows coming up on MadHattersShows.com. You've got all those ones from Donnie Baker. At the end of the the uh, broadcast here tonight, we're going to run down some other ones that are uh, that are coming on. But the immediate shows coming up are actually Dustin Sims, um, and uh, he's going to be calling in here in a minute. But we might as well just. Uh, put up a video here and, and let uh, some of the folks that haven't heard of Dustin maybe uh, maybe you'll look at his face and go I know that guy I hadn't but I watched him today yeah it's one of those things that like cause it, I don't know I don't know I deal with it's a million comics now it's like rap yeah. and I was like I don't know this guy then I go and you can YouTube everybody now mm-hmm. and I'm like okay good yeah he's like one of these guys that like even if you didn't watch him even if you don't know his name you're not following him You've probably seen his face because if you have friends on social network, he's the guy that everybody presses the share button on his videos. You know oh, what I mean? Okay. It's like the it's it's one of those where you're like I, I've seen that guy's face somewhere. Well, because you were scrolling and it was there. He just had a, a triangle in the front of it, right? Like that's the, um, you know. So uh, so we get a lot of a lot of that. But uh, he has a stage show now. Uh, it's doing very well. And actually, Friday night he's going to be in Wichita. Um, I believe the next night, Saturday, he's in Tulsa, oh, right. and those are both our shows. And then, if the you want to see his live show, um, August fifteenth. Uh, Where's he gonna be at here? Yeah, he's, he's gonna, gonna be in the Irving Theater. Yeah. So. Oh, Irving. Okay. Okay. East Side. Yeah, that's where Mad Hatter shows puts on our, our stuff. We I don't that's, think well, if we had you on, we haven't had you on a Mad Hatter thing. We've no. had you at, at the, the. I'm only the for emergencies, Neil. Uh, you're also where I, where <laughs> I, I send as the uh, like the the. The mercenary, you know, I need somebody to go kill in a small town. I'm like, let's send sweaty hands. So send him to an Eagles Club in Crawfordsville. Or yeah, something. You know the Eagles like, Club. I knew it was an animal. Eagles <laughs> Club, Moose Lodge, Horse Factory. I knew it was something like that. <laughs> but I always have fun with those things because I go in there and they look like, oh my God, uh, we didn't know he was black. <laughs> You know what? I don't have a lot of black rooms to put you in. That's the thing. <laughs> and when I say I don't have a lot, I mean, I don't have any right now. So that's, uh, you know, are you pleasantly surprised if I send you to a show and you're like, hey, there's one. Of, there's there's one. You know? Yeah. <laughs> when, when, when it was, it was at Winamac. Was that what it is? Yeah. And I got there and I was like, okay, again, no black people. I'm going to be the only one here. And it's the first thing, you know, you break the ice. I come out there like, oh, I feel like I'm at the white family reunion. <laughs> there you go. And I'm just the black sheep. <laughs> so uh, how is that? Uh, is it easier? Is it harder? Or is it all the same when you do a show where everybody in the room's black versus you do a show everybody's in the room's white or when it's a mixed crowd? Like, how, do you approach anything different? I do. Uh, with white crowds, I do. There is something I'm trying to think of what it is that I do that's different because I you don't want to scare them. 
And it's like I, I I do an icebreaker like when I'm I'm coming into town and and like because they're all just like staring at me like oh my god is he gonna be funny is anything and so mm. I like I go up there and they just stare and like I don't just go up and grab the mic and start talking I like stare at them for a little bit and I'm like this is how I feel. <laughs> I said you guys are staring at me and I'm staring at you. Yeah. I said but I knew this was a wonderful city. As soon as I came into town and I got that nice police escort all the way, following me all the way here, I'm like, they're making sure that I get here safe. Yeah. And then they just start laughing like, I know that's not true. Yeah, it's one of those things. I've noticed small town crowds like it if you make fun of them, but they want to mm. like you first. So yes. you have to be careful. If you go up there and you just start tearing into them, they may not yeah. like you. Yeah, you know, they, yeah. They, they, then, they, then they get like this. They fold their yeah. arms like, has, I'm not going to laugh at anything. There has to be some kind of icebreaker there, some kind of, yeah, hey, we're going to. And so I, do you remember how? You remember what you did the first show I had in Crawfordsville? Oh, what I do? So I introduced you, and it wasn't a great response. And you said something about, "Oh, put the black guy on last," and the crowd was like, huh? "Like they were tempted, like they yeah, they were See, like they were scared. We don't want to laugh." So um, this was a long time ago, and you've done a thousand shows, but this was one of my first ones I put on. So um, what you did was you reintroduced yourself. Oh, yeah, the and then you brought up that you didn't want to hear the N word. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you want to kind of... Like, like, yeah, I said I Don't did. let me do your bit while you're sitting here. Yeah, I said I, I, I'm, you know, I'm from Indianapolis, and, and I appreciate it for the sake of us all getting along tonight if nobody would use the N-word, because I'm from Indianapolis. I hear the N-word all the time. So please, nobody say NASCAR. And then they just laugh so right. hard. And, and the room exhales and goes, okay, we're okay to we're can't like, have fun Oh, with you this thought guy. I was talking about the other N word. Oh, I know y'all <laughs> use that one. <laughs> I have no doubt. We had a comedian that when, I, when John was running a, one of the clubs downtown, and, and uh, he, had, uh, he was on some painkillers. And uh, he was a, a black guy that uh, he was drinking on his painkillers a little bit. And uh, the first show, he was like, <laughs> hey, um, they didn't laugh a lot at me. Do they like me? Was everything all right? And I said, well, did you notice the makeup of that room? And he's like, what do you mean? I said, well, it was like 50 people, but like 42 of them were white. And they're like, he's like, okay, so. And I said, well, you said the N word like 162 times. You know, See, <laughs> that, 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 he that, got that. relaxed and he just started going. You know, and I was like, maybe tone that down because white that's people don't want to laugh at them. With you know a, what like, I mean? Yes, <laughs> they don't. If you use, they, 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 it's like it scares them. It's cool if they use it, but you use it somehow. It's offensive. <laughs> if I was to say the N word, they'd be like, we're not gonna laugh at that. Well, just uh, just to clarify here, I'm not agreeing that it's cool if they use it either. Like that's not. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I, I try that, my that's best not to use it's it. It's a stereotype with the small towns, but I think you've been received pretty well uh, everywhere we've we've put you. I think Man, and, and, people uh, are people; they just want to laugh. Yeah, I knew know. when I when the kids were laughing, I was like, "Oh, I've got this. Yeah, I've got this." And it's like so. I, I've I've kind of got this whole thing where I pair you with like a redneck comedian or somebody like that, and it's almost like it's a you know, um, it's a double bill. You know, where we've got somebody with a twang a little bit and then I got yeah. and it's and it's somebody that's like crowds like when somebody that's not exactly like them is in their town doing their jokes and hey we appreciate you came to our little town because nothing else comes here you know if it was it was either bingo or this you yeah know I mean? like, you you make fun of the little town and i was like oh i saw the sheriff cars with barney and andy over there and they were both parked so who's protecting the city you know they they, they just get to laugh so hard and they, one guy's like we only have eight thousand people i'm like i didn't know you was really counting now you have eight thousand and two <laughs> today but yeah, they 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 was a good crowd, and I I can tell that they was afterward they was warm. They they bought me drinks, they, they bought my merchandise. Of course, I had all small shirts. Everybody bought them. Like we don't have any big shirts. I'm like everybody big bought them. You got to give those to the kids then, right? Yeah, like, win them. Like, like I don't imagine that there's a lot of adult smalls. I, yeah, uh, all I had was smalls too, and I'm like, all right, no more. <laughs> I ain't even making smalls no more. I done had these smalls for two years. I don't know anybody small. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, if you're watching here, we are still waiting on a phone call from uh, Mr. Sims, who earlier today is Give me his us number. I'm going to call him. So, I'll call him myself. No, I just no. fired off a text to the because I don't actually have him in my phone, or else I'd be like, you know what I mean? So, uh, you're like, um, Dustin, call us, man. We know you're busy. You're podcasting, you're YouTubing, shit on mind, but... you're on stage. Call us up. We scheduled it. Absolutely. I'm kind of glad I had you go down to your car. And grab those signs. So, uh, hey, man. Hey, hey, the signs. You didn't know I was going to ask you to do time on the show tonight, but uh, it happens. Uh, the signs are one. It's my most requested joke. <laughs> I, I, I finally got what Ricky Smiley said when he got tired of doing Little Durham. I'm like, wow, it was funny. It was funny. And people were like, did you bring the signs? I'm like, oh. <laughs> it's old now. 
But everybody loves it, so I don't mind doing it now. Awesome. Well, um, it may get cut off here uh, in a second, but uh, you know, if he dials in, but uh, let's uh, let's get the abbreviated version, I guess, or the you know, right yes, now. Yes, we're doing uh, real start. We say like, Dustin, don't call in until I get done. This is the shit you would normally pay to come see in a club, but we're gonna have Robert Day, sweaty hands. Uh, it's about these people. Where did I put this? At? <laughs> this can you see it? It's a cut. It there. It is right there. I see it. Okay. You see these people on the side of the road all the time holding these signs all the time and and thinking that you're going to give them some money, but you're smarter than that. You start changing your radio and fixing your hair and yelling at the kids, sit down, because you ain't going to give them nothing. I got tired of it. I said, man, I wrote some signs of my own to see if they want to help me out with some of my problems. Because they just wrote their problems down. I wrote my problems down, too. My child support three hundred dollars. Help me out, bro. They got a variety of signs, so I got a variety of signs. My car payment four hundred dollars. Your bike don't take no gas. Help me out, man. Mm mm. No 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 no. That's not it. My rent eight hundred dollars. You don't have no rent. You're not breaking no lease. You can move anytime you want to. No, 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 no. And this one I made for my light-skinned brothers and sisters. This is not for the black folk. This is for the white people only. This is the vet bill. This ain't no Vietnam vet. This ain't no war vet. This is not an vet. This is where you take your dog to the doctor. And black people don't take their dog to the doctor. Black people dog don't even get dog food. Y'all know we eating chicken, the dog eating the bones. We eating macaroni and cheese, the dog eating macaroni and cheese. We eating sweet potatoes, the dog eating sweet potatoes. And if we got diabetes, the dog got diabetes. Because if we ain't got health care, the dog ain't got health care. i tell you what else, too. Hey, people out there with the COVID, I caught the COVID. COVID was not nice at all. I caught the COVID, and it was messed up because you got everybody in your house, staying in the house now. And it messed up some households. It didn't mess up mine, but it got real tight there for a minute because a lot of crazy stuff was going on in my house. Like, I bought a bunch of food while the rest of y'all was buying bleach and water, all the bleach and water y'all was buying up. Mm -mm, I bought food. But I'm a central worker, I had to still go to work. I went to work, came home, wasn't no food in the refrigerator. Wasn't because nobody ate all the food up. That wasn't why it was no food in the refrigerator. Because these kids are now programmed to look at the dates of stuff. So I go to make me a bowl of cereal, no milk. What happened to the milk? We had a gallon of milk yesterday. Well, we looked at the milk and it had the 17. So we poured it out. You poured it out. Went to make me a sandwich. Give me some bread. Nope. Bread said 13. Threw it away. So I got tired and said, I'm Eddie Petty and Petty Eddie at my house. I want to get even my kids. I went in my son's room, Neil. Got his Jordans. Took them and threw them in the trash. He said, Dad, why'd you throw away my Jordans? I said, they're expired. He came out with a new pair this week. You're not walking around the house <laughs> with those old shoes. Get them old shoes out my house. I got even with them. But yeah, the COVID, crazy no, that's stuff. That's right. Well, we go live, and uh, sometimes uh, sometimes things uh, happen like people forget that there's a, a time zone difference from uh, where Dustin Sims lives oh. and where we live. So um, <laughs> He's got another hour then. <laughs> yeah, I guess he's brushing his teeth now or something, like, like pulling over his car or finishing uh, having sex with his wife or whatever was happening at that time. He's going to be calling in here in a minute. So uh, don't abandon us yet. Dustin uh, Sims will be messaging us. But in my infinite wisdom, I didn't have his phone number programmed into my phone. So, That's bad. Um, so I had to go. And uh, that's why we brought you, you on the show. Like this is you were getting the Sweaty Hands Day show. Yes, which I think should be a sitcom anyway. With Donnie Baker as the neighbor. Like I think we should actually do this. 
I you think know? I, I, I like that. We ought to get that. Me and Donnie ought to work on uh, that. You moved to, that. you know, you moved to the the white trash side of town and trailer park or something, and Donnie's living there. Like that would be a good kind of yeah. Like I downgraded. Fish went out, down. yeah, fish out of water kind of thing. Like that mm-hmm. kind of. Uh, so we were talking about this a little bit earlier because we got a, a country uh, rapper on the show later, a guy that's been uh, doing country infused and I got uh, questions. stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So uh, you 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 came out. I don't mean to to tell everybody here, but uh, told me that you know some country songs too. You grew I up do. on that. That's I I, I, uh, I got uh, uh, the one uh, Johnny Paycheck and uh, Reba McIntyre and all those people. I got two dollars in the jukebox. $5 in the bottom, 10 more just in case that don't do the trick. All right, I, I, I wanted you to talk I, about it. I didn't necessarily yeah. want you to karaoke. Yeah, but that's man, how, you know, you, that's I, <laughs> I, I, I know some of the old songs. Man, it's just like on road trips. We I grew up on it. It was John before singing. rap. My, that's all we had was country music, jazz, yeah. and R&B, but country. It was really rap before because they was rhyming. Mm. Oh, just yeah, let's say the... the First country song ever was Ike Turner, you know, if you like the way that it was like the the modern the way country went, you know, they credit that. him as one of the first people to sing like that, you know. Yeah. So, um, very, uh, very interesting uh, perspective to bring up. So, um, let's Good. actually pull up a, a, another video here. We've got um, after the weekend mm-hmm. that Donnie Baker is going to be on. Um, Donnie Baker, yeah, like uh, the next. Different artists that we're going to be doing some shows with is Mick Foley. So if we can get the song there, are you familiar with Mick Foley? W W W. It's more W. I don't know how many W's is in there. Now. <laughs> Bunch of W with an E on the end or something, and jumping out of cages and busting heads. Uh, I like. Can, I you like. Can see him coming out here too. This oh, is actually when go, he was yeah. in TNA. So he was in ECW. He was in WCW. He was in see, WWE. I knew it was in W. He's been in TNA. He's been in like all the major federations, and uh, basically retired now. Although I saw him in the ring for Warrior Wrestling, um, doing kind of a, a promotional thing with Frank the Clown uh, recently, but. Um, he's. I think he's back under contract with WWE, but um, he's got stories that a lot of people have heard, and so he's a storytelling type comedian. There's got to uh, be some stories in there. Yeah, he's, in fact, they call it stories you've already heard, but he's going to talk about <laughs> yeah. it from his perspective. Um, going to go on there and, and and do his thing. So we have um, we have him in. Buffalo Grove, uh, Illinois. I don't know if you've ever performed up in uh, near Chicago uh, before. Yeah, but, but uh, this will be at their community center. It'll be our first time there, but they have a whole stage already set up in there. Um, we've got him in Milwaukee. Um, we've got him in um, uh, Indianapolis and Lafayette. I think are the other shows that are. Where's, where's he coming here? And Madison. So um, he's going to be here at the end of September, I believe, on the twenty sixth. So all right, Mick Foley. All right. So it looks like Dustin is here. Dustin, sorry about the confusion. Man. We've been waiting. Yeah. My bad. I'm so sorry. That's I got like, the time mixed up. White people are always late, man. White people are always late. Well, he needs five minutes, so he's trying to speculate on what you were doing at the time. So hopefully I didn't interrupt anything sex. super important. Yeah, yeah that's why I thought. Sex. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I hope you finished because I don't want you to be angry at us while you're sitting there. Oh, no, still it's to... still up, but we'll figure it out. Doing a little Adam and Eve thing. Yeah. <laughs> Code Sims, 50% off. <laughs> this is Robert Sweaty Hands Day. He does comedy, same as I do. Uh, my name is cool. Neil Snyder, and mm-hmm. uh, we are the Mad Hatter duo this time. This time, We, we yeah. played one of your videos in the background. No sound, because we're worried about all this copyright stuff now. We actually got yeah. shut down one time. Piracy. Uh, but, uh, no shit. We were going over the idea that you're you're a weird kind of famous right now. You're one of these guys yeah. that, like, you've got fans. People know who you are sometimes. But other people know your face just because everybody hits that share button when you're doing your videos. Even so when I saw what I said, he looks familiar. I don't yeah, know him, when they're but he scrolling, looks familiar. They're like, they're so, I mean, do you get recognized like now just, like, getting gas and going to the buy yeah, brand? Yeah, started and, here lately. Uh, <laughs> it's weird. Like, I get mostly recognized at Walmart and Dollar General. <laughs> but uh, it's never, like, a nice place, you know? Like... <laughs> <laughs> it's never like Red Lobster, bro. But the young it's just people a, like shitholes, but it's fine, man. <laughs> so you're you're getting those followers, even the people that are you know, they're finally they're clicking on it. And they're like, oh, let me follow this guy. You're up around a million followers now on Facebook, right? Yeah. And yeah. how many on YouTube? Uh, like eight fifty, I think. 
Wow, that's I got, ridiculous! I got so sixteen you just, followers. If you go to take a shit tomorrow in the morning <laughs> and you go live, like uh, half a million people are going to see it. That's crazy. <laughs> well, tomorrow's my first, like, my kid's first day back at school. My wife's in there crying herself to sleep right now. It's either about that or the sex we just had. I don't know. <laughs> Where's yeah, the accent I from? I can go live after I drop them off. <laughs> Where's the accent from? Uh, Alabama. 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 Okay. Very nice. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Sweaty Heads, we were talking about, hey, the, you know, when you wanted to do comedy when we first started out, you had to find somebody that had a room. You had to find somebody that had an open mic or a club that had that, that kind of yes. thing. Yes. Did you ever start you out open that up way? For them. Or did you just go straight to making videos? Uh, I just started making videos. And Rocky Dale Davis, he's kind of gaining some traction now because The Rock followed him on Instagram. And, like, apparently mm -hmm. that just blows you the fuck up now <laughs> so uh he, he he reached out to me and he's from alabama too and he was like why don't you do stand up and i was like well i want to uh because i do stories you know already mm -hmm. and he, it was in the middle of the pandemic and he was struggling like to sell tickets and stuff and he was like you could do it so he, he kind of pushed me to do it and like he helped me out he'd been doing it for like eight or nine years and he kind of told me i sucked uh and like really pushed me <laughs> in the right direction you know Right. Uh, so it's been like a uh, weird growing pain, like going from videos to on stage, but it's been fun. I really enjoy doing the shows. You get these old school stand ups that are just like, oh, yeah. those guys on YouTube, they got it easy. They're they're just talking and they don't have to worry about the crowd. And I'm like, that's yeah. exactly the opposite. Yeah, because I feed off of a crowd. I need that regular, you know, I need that 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 back from them. Yes, you're just yeah. going there naked. You don't know if you're eating shit or not till you start seeing the comments, right? Like that's <laughs> right. right. And there's like four hundred thousand comments. Comments of people telling you to die. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> just like great. That's great. How do you deal with that? Where you got just people mm -hmm. just talking shit about you, just going? Are you just like, hey, you saw me? Who cares? Or well, how's that? Yeah, I've gotten that way. At first, it used to really piss me off, and I would like, mm -hmm. it would live rent fee in my head. I would just like go at people all night. My wife's like, just let it go. And I'm like, no, yeah, it's, it's always guy. gonna be somebody. But um. <laughs> Now I just like I respond to people in the first fifteen or twenty minutes, then I just don't even look back at it. Good. That's just the best thing to do, I mm. think. Well, clearly you have more people that like you than don't, uh, yeah. or unless they're all tuning in because you're 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 blowing up and your tours, you're selling well, all that kind of stuff. What's mm. what's that like as a change? All of a sudden, you you go from just making mm. videos in your car and stuff to now I'm 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 backstage and I'm going out and there's a whole room of people there to to ready for you. It's been very surreal. Um, I don't know. I, I, I've always wanted it, and, and it just really kind of happened this year. Uh, I've just been really grateful for it. Um, I don't know. It's It's been a weird transition, but I was working at Honda for like 10 years, <laughs> six or seven days a week, and now I'm like living this dream. So it doesn't even feel like it's me. You know, <laughs> I still feel like I'm just an imposter in my own skin <laughs> most days, but... That's We're how it was it. for me when I first started. Like I was like, I'm playing comedian. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? It's like, cause I have a day job. I, I didn't start out <laughs> right. as young, that kind of thing. So, yeah. you know, it's it's. I still feel like a, you know, I'm I'm playing this role or this kind of thing. So it's. I, I like seeing when people kind of blow up. You know, do you I mean, have a preference? Would you like? Do you like making the videos or do you like being on stage live with the crowd? Uh, I used to would say the the videos, but now that I've gotten oh shit, I'm sorry. <laughs> now that I've gotten like stage presence you know and i've been on stage a lot i love it like you yeah, said i see, feed off the see, crowd it ain't nothing um, like the, it's, the it's live irreplaceable crowd. feeling it's by far my favorite i would rather it's be instant gratification right there like you got approval right there yes it's that instant satisfaction yes. so do I have things right that you're just kind of winging it as you go along, or has this been a calculated plan? Like, have you, do you have like, are you, are you, you know, you have advisors and marketing, or are you just kind of like, you just all kind of happened? It just happened, man. Mm. I wing it now. I, I've been mm. really consistent with my videos. I used to try to post every week, sometimes twice a week, and then I realized that was too much. That was my next question. My I was going to say, how often uh, do you so post? Now I try to do like maybe two new or three a month, maybe, and you know try to put some time in between it um but there's really no system that i have i'm just i mean you've seen it i struggled calling into this I must have done redneck, man. you know what <laughs> the reason why i asked it was not an insult it's actually i because you're doing some stuff well that maybe you don't even realize you're doing like mm -hmm. one thing i notice is i get notifications somebody goes and sees your show and they're sitting in North Carolina in this auditorium, and they're taking a picture with their friends or whatever, and they tag that they're at the Dustin Sims show. And I have seen you on their page thanking them for coming. 
Like, oh, yeah, yeah, comedians yeah. don't do that, do that shit. That's something though that's yeah. like like Mm-mm. people that have been doing this forever. They're like, oh, I don't even need to advertise the show. The club should be doing their job. Blah blah blah. You're in there that's interacting me. with the people that are <laughs> spending me. money with you, and that's smart in mm-hmm. 2021. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. Another thing I've noticed, you're kind of a potty mouth, right? You're kind of a dirty guy, right? You, you, you've mm-hmm. got, yeah, it's yeah. not a G-rated show. Yay! But a lot of times, people that are real <laughs> dirty, they don't get females fans. They they, they have mainly male f- uh, fan base, right? Mm-hmm. And I noticed yeah. you've got all kinds of women fans, and I think a big part of that, other than you're kind of a good-looking guy, mm-hmm. is you talk about mm-hmm. your wife. You uh, you know, you include her, like, you're, you know, you're a potty mouth, but you're like, you, you have a family, and you're proud of them, and you don't hide them. Right. Um, was, was that intentional, or that's just who you are? That, I mean, my comedy comes from my experiences, and all my experiences, most of them's with my wife. Like, my almost entire set is, like, about her, or it's got her in it. She comes to all my shows. Uh, I make her sell the merch. She's going to get the money anyways, you know, exactly. so I make her sling that. But, yeah, they do. Uh, it resonates well with people. It makes um, it seem more relatable because a lot of the stuff yeah. that we deal with or what most married couples deal with. How so long I you think been they married? Really resonate with that. How long you been married? Uh, it'd be 10 years in September. Yeah, you got a lot of material. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. Oh, yeah, bro. Anything <laughs> past 10 minutes, you, <laughs> you made it. But, you know, some guys, they, they, they have the act and they're dirty and all this kind of stuff, and it comes off as misogynistic or it comes off, the, oh, that's mm. bro humor or whatever. Right, and you don't whatever. go. So I wondered if you tailored, like, hey, we're going to specifically try to get women or it just, it just happened. So it sounds like you... You're just being. It genuine. just happened that way. I just speak off of experience, and I just do my kind of comedy, and then it, it attracts whoever it attracts. When I first started doing the videos, my family was really embarrassed by them, and now that they're taking off, they're like, "This is great." I <laughs> yeah, wish he wouldn't do that. He made how much? What? Was yeah, like, keep talking shit. Like that's, 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 and that's, that, that's in regular comedy too. It's like, oh, I don't want you to say that. Matter of fact, don't do this. And then you say something like, "Oh." Well, go ahead. Got a couple pictures we were going to pull up on the screen here and let you kind of explain yourself on this. One of them was a cup of coffee. Um, there was a non-traditional cup of coffee. I've got that one to, to pull up here, um, which I got a seven-day ban for putting a bong that looked like a cock up in the group. You somehow got by with this one. Maybe they just they know who you are. But what's going on in this photo? I have no idea how that got by. I was just fucking around, man. Like mm-hmm. I had the Adam and Eve box still on the table. I thought he and had I was like a just long like, this will get some hits, you know? For some reason, man, fake dick sale. I don't understand why, but it just does. So I just threw that off in there. I don't even remember what I said about it. But. Something about vitamin D in the morning or something. I can't remember. But it was you know, <laughs> oh, yeah, something, yeah, yeah, something yeah. ridiculous. But know, like just silly shit like that. Thousands really of people. does well on Instagram. Thousands mm-hmm. of people click that button. You know what I mean? It's just like that. That's, mm-hmm. that's an amazing thing to be able to just put up some random photo and boom, there we go. Which I'm guessing the Adam Need folks were happy that uh, that you're getting that kind of exposure too, right? They yeah. love it, and like I, I, people think I'm just like a freak, mm-hmm. man. But like that's the only company. Like a lot of companies reach out, but they want me to just do like sell their thing and clean and stuff, and mm-hmm. they'll let me say whatever I want. They don't give a shit, and I'm like, <laughs> I'll work with y'all then. So yeah, well, freedom. You know, I'm not gonna change my stuff to be like that so it's working don't, don't do it it's working i mean it's just sex toys so <laughs> so we got you in wichita on a mad hatter show on friday we got you on a mad hatter show on uh saturday in tulsa and uh, yes, sir. we're only plugging our our brand here uh so uh, <laughs> we're gonna skip ahead i know you have other shows that will have you tell people how they can see all the other ones but the next show then we have with you is in indianapolis um on on august the 15th so um are these cities you've been to before or is this brand new when you when you go on tour that you're hitting places these will all be brand new for me i've been to oklahoma city before but i've never been to tulsa so this will all be new Used to, I've only been like, before I started doing comedy, it was like Alabama and like Florida and Georgia, Mm. like right here. So Mm. it's been a fun experience traveling. Um, I try so. to like I, when I get gigs too. I, I try to make it a vacation. You know what I mean? Because I'm not going yeah. on vacations otherwise. So like I had these shows in Kansas and I went to the Wizard of Oz Museum because I'm in Kansas, right? Like it's a you know I was in Hannibal, yeah. Missouri. I did all the Mark Twain shit. So uh, yeah, oh, my it's, wife uh, would love that. Uh, oh, Wizard of Oz. Wichita's got an outdoor like uh, it looks like their city from like 1850, and you can walk through there. It's all the old buildings. They've moved them into this area and marked it all off. It's um, I can't remember what it's called, uh, Cowtown or something like that. But yeah, there's some there's some fun stuff. 
stuff you can can check out when you're there in the in the old town of, of Wichita, um, Indianapolis. I don't know. Just stay out of the canal. Don't you know? Get shot. Like that's, <laughs> <laughs> that's, 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 that's <laughs> stay away from yeah. the east side. That sounds like around here. Maybe mm-hmm. I, maybe I need to, to send some warnings. But uh, <laughs> um, so another guy that we have been uh, booking shows with as well. I saw a picture of you guys uh, in the same photo here. Um, tell me about uh, the 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 picture we have here of you and and uh, this other guy. Oh, Ginger Billy. That's right after I beat him in arm wrestling. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Now, he came to my show in Columbia, man. Super nice guy. Like I've talked to him a lot anyways. We've been friends before. That's uh, what I was going to ask. Like, you guys are already came friends. To the show, and he's just a nice guy, man. He's just an old, good old boy. So I love that dude. Yeah, so we've got uh, MadHatterShows.com. You can check out uh, a lot of these places. It's like you're going to be somewhere, and then Billy comes a couple months later. We're trying to kind of do that on purpose because we imagine you guys have some of the same fans. So, um, Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Any thoughts? Now, people want us to do a show together, but like his My- is like PG, and then mine's just not. So it wouldn't work mm-hmm. out. You can't restrain think. yourself for a collaboration then. That's mm-hmm. uh, Maybe a video, yeah. maybe a, a carefully edited video. You could make that happen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so are there – I mean, do you – just kind of do your own thing and not pay attention to everybody else or are there other comedians right now that you're kind of got your eye on that you're uh following and that make you laugh oh dude i love like a lot of comics man mark norman's one of my favorites right now i uh, love dave Chappelle. uh he's the goat there's just mm-hmm. a lot of people like that tim Dillon's really funny right now um i i, I love comedy i'm a nerd for it i watch mm-hmm. a lot of comedy podcast but as far as like my content goes i try to clear my head and just do my own shit because Mm -hmm. it's easy to watch somebody a lot and then accidentally start trying to emulate that person and i don't ever want to do that so uh but yeah i'm a big comedy fan i have a lot of people that i watch yeah you're kind of i'm impressed because you're kind of part of this new wave the folks that you don't have to go toil in empty rooms, you know, in a in a comedy club now and hope somebody puts you on a show where somebody sees you and all this kind of stuff. Now, yeah. if the right person sees you on YouTube and they start clicking buttons, you could be famous in the morning. And that's, uh, you know what I mean? And it sounds easy, true, yeah. but if it was that easy, there'd be thousands of you and there's not. So it's mm-hmm. really, I mean, it's impressive that you have maintained. Some people go viral off one video. You've made this last for months and months, and now you're I into years. I think that's the problem with a lot of people is the trajectory is too fast and they don't have like anything for to fall back on. I think if if it's a slow trajectory, you have a lot of content that people can go back and watch after they find you because that's the mm-hmm. first thing people do when they find you and they like you. They start going to watch old What's stuff tough? and a lot of people, especially if they have one go viral, they just sit on that video. Mm-hmm. And, like, they get lazy. Uh, I try to stay consistent with posting and stuff. Awesome. I think that's key. So we've got mm-hmm. some shows where we've uh, your, your agent said, "Hey, we're going to be in this state. Can you find uh, can you find this venue or whatever?" So we're kind of a patchwork. We've got uh, I think five shows with you on our website. So we encourage people to check wow. that out. But if we're not anywhere, um, we're not doing any of our shows where where you live, uh, viewers. Uh, where else can they find out where Dustin's entire calendar is at? Where, where... Uh, you can look on DustinSimsTickets.com. It's got all my dates and all the ticket links on there and order and everything so dustin sims tickets.com all right we're happy to keep collaborating with you hopefully we'll get several i'm a I'm playing bartender at the Irving Theater Show, so I'll get you a bucket of whatever you oh, drink. Oh, nice, all that. Dude. But, uh, You'll see me a lot then. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Well, you, that, I imagine you that's going to get swarmed if that happens. So let's uh, <laughs> let's let's try not to have a mob. But yeah, definitely um, encourage people to to check out um, all of Dustin's shows, and hopefully I can get my uh, my nerd habit is I like getting fan photos with folks. So I'm going to be uh, we'll be playing fanboy backstage, probably smelling like beer. But uh, me too. Get, <laughs> get on there and and, and check out your live show so thank you so much for calling in sorry about the the time zone uh concern um no that's me man i told you i'm just dumb do i, do I need to text <laughs> I you, you when you're, me cause, on, man. because in oklahoma and kansas you stay on central but i need to send you a text in indianapolis and go hey your show's in 45 minutes or you probably remember <laughs> yeah, that uh yeah. indianapolis we're I on need somebody to hold my hand really dude i'm like a toddler <laughs> i'm gonna take a picture with him so i can go viral too because I, go. I only got like 20 followers so. can we ride your coattails dustin I'm yeah like, i got y'all man just hang on tight awesome awesome cool cool well, hey we definitely appreciate you calling in let you go back and and blow that load that's been sitting there and, and, and for the last I got it, minutes. man. I'm going to do it right now. I appreciate uh, no. y'all. All, All right. right now. Hey, thanks. <laughs> Dustin Sims definitely as funny as... Uh it's advertised, right? Yeah, it's super I love the accent. Guy. I love Southern accents. I don't know why. It just sounds good. Yeah, and then you know what? Like, I'd love to... 
go over and start talking about let's analyze that interview but we've already got our next guest is called in so let's get him on the stage here Spizzle, All right. can you hear us Boom, boom. What's good? I can hear y'all, man. That was like perfect timing. Like Dustin just hung up and like I looked over and I looked back and there you were. So did you plan that? Have you been watching? Uh, Of course he did. I try to be on time. I'm usually uh, um, a few minutes late, so I'm glad I was on time. Awesome. Well, Strizzo, I'm Neil. I've met you a few times. Uh, this is Robert Sweaty Hands Day. He How does you doing? comedy also. What's up, Robert? Good to meet you, mm-hmm. brother. We appreciate right. you calling in here. Originally, uh, we were we were going to have second chance call in, and that didn't work out. So we appreciate uh, you calling in. You can probably yeah. answer all the same questions. Uh, you I know, got questions. <laughs> he's got questions. We're like, this guy sings country. He's like, I have questions. So. I have questions. Yeah. So you the DJ? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm DJ, uh, DJ, producer, manager. Okay. Yeah. All that. So how did you and him meet? If he sings country and you DJ, you country DJ? Yeah, so, you know, you know, down in Florida, we mix it up, you know, in the South, really, we mix it up, you know, you can, you can be in a country club, but you can be doing some hip hop stuff. And at the time that I met Chance, I was uh, just getting off the road with Bubba Sparks. I'm sure y'all heard of him. Oh, uh, yeah, you know Bubba Sparks, Sparks, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I was just getting off the road with Bubba Sparks and a promoter. Had reached out because uh, Bubba was taking a break, mm-hmm. and uh, he was like, "I got this this artist that just went viral, and y'all both live in Tampa, and uh, you know I'd like for you to check him out, and if if you dig it, you know would you come on tour and and be the the tour DJ?" So I checked it out, man. I was blown away. This this is almost about five years ago now. I just heard but, a few uh, minutes ago, and I was blown away. I was like, "Wow, <laughs> yeah, country, yeah, man, uh, super talented man, and." And you know we we fine tune some things over the year, and uh, I mean the sky's the limit now. You know once once we you know uh, start you put out this new project, uh, old country soul and uh, old I mean the sky's the limit. Soul. So that, that's you know we, that we, just we, you know, we met good. Old Bubba country Sparks, soul. We bridged the gap with the rap in the country. He's mm-hmm. like the pioneer of that, and then. Uh, it, it just all worked out, man. It's funny. If somebody said, you know, Second Chance is coming out with a polka album, what do you think of that? I'd be like, I believe it, and it's probably going to be pretty good. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like everything. See, that's the thing is he's not trying stuff, and it's, like, terrible. Like, everything he tries is pretty good. Like, that's yeah. that's amazing. Does that piss you off? Or like, do you just, like, like, when you see somebody that talented that, like, everything they touch just right. works? Right, so you know, I worked in radio before I uh, I got into my my international thing, DJing, which started with Bubba Sparks. Um, working in radio, you know, uh, y- y- you you want to be able to put your hand on the artist of like, okay, this artist does this. Mm-hmm. So when I met Chance and like, okay, he had Head Over Heels, and then he had My World, yeah, and all of a sudden he'll start rapping like Twister. I was like, whoa. <laughs> Yeah, I just listen to, to both of those, especially to my world. Yeah, yeah. man. So it it, it it will it will it will catch you off guard. It caught me uh, off guard. <laughs> say, say again. It caught me off guard. Oh I yeah, was, it, it, I was it, not it expecting it. Catch you off guard, and you know when it comes to mainstream, you know radio, it kind of catches them off guard too. Right. Because they don't know what angle to come and you know how to box them in. Right. You don't even know you what know. station to send them to. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that's- <laughs> right, 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 right. That's so, crazy. So that that's that's it, man. But it's been an awesome ride. Um, you know, watching him grow into the mm-hmm. artist that he is today. And uh, like I say, the sky's the limit, man. You know, we out here, we loving it. Uh, we've been able to go out here and and captivate, you know, the audiences, you know, with our live performances. It's a game changer. You know that's been you know catapulting us through, man. So, yeah. so I've been to several of your shows, uh, especially this will be like the fourth time I think that you've come through and done something with Mad Hatter shows. We got August twentieth, yeah. August twenty first. We're in Cincinnati and Louisville, and I, I, I I'm not I don't have it in front of me which one we're in which night, but it's uh, Cincinnati and Louisville, so they're 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 close by each other. We're doing them both. Um, but Robert's never seen the show. Um, oh. So he's like, "How do you how do you set that up?" So you're doing you're mm-hmm. doing a, a DJ set up front. Uh, yeah. How do you how do you prep that? Uh, tell people kind of what to expect with uh, um, yeah, you like throw country know. in there too, or how's that how's that go for people? Yeah, yeah. So the way the way that we came up uh, with the concept, the stage concept, 
actually came from an artist named Yellow Wolf. I'm sure I heard of him, you know, Yellow Wolf. I, and so I love Yellow what Wolf. it is, the DJ set up and then we have uh, the live guitar and then we mm-hmm. have the high energy. So it's like, it, it's just a big uh, gumbo pot of energy. And uh, if you've never been to a show, um, you'll never forget it. Yeah, I can tell you that so right you now. play a little Tupac and then you just sneak in the country. Uh, man, it, <laughs> I mean that's that, that's a good analogy. That's a good, to, <laughs> that's a good way to put it. Yeah, it, it definitely it goes from you definitely gonna hear a lot of country, mm-hmm. you're gonna hear a lot of rap, and you're gonna hear a lot of rock and roll all mashed up together. Yeah, because uh, like a song, undeniable. Uh, that sounds like a rock song. If that's like some Lincoln Park mm-hmm. something or other. Going yeah, on. So, it's a game changer. You know, it's it's crazy that you know he's not just country and rap. He actually sounds kind of like soul on something, and sounds kind of like rock on other things. And it's it's uh, it's wild. So, yeah, he he definitely knows how to do it all, man. Um, and he really knows how to do it. It's not like a fluke. Like, did he? You know, oh man, I I try to rap this day. Uh, no, it's like. He really know how to rap. He really know how to sing. You know, he really know how to do the rock. You know, you know, get the get the rock vocals out. Um, you know, sitting in a studio session with him, you'll be just sitting there like, <laughs> That's what I asked. Yeah, you're just like, why are you so good? That's ridiculous. Right, right, um, right. Did he say how he got started in, into the country? What made him do something country? Because that's so different. What made him? You know, because because y'all in the south, or is it? What what made him do country? Uh, I mean, just to be he different. just really liked country. You know, like you know, like he just really authentically liked country. You know, when we first met, you know, because uh, it, it took me for a loop too when we first met. Because, okay, you know, that's I've what I've been waiting here. I've been waiting for him to say that. You know, yeah, it, mm-hmm. it just it just and so what really made me know it was real. We was we got off on an exit in like West Virginia. We was traveling somewhere. And uh, we walk into the store, and the store clerk was like, "Hey, your second chance." And I mean, <laughs> ain't no way in the world this dude just ran across second chance just like by chance, you know, <laughs> at this weird at by chance, right? <laughs> at this random gas station, I was like, "Yo, this movement is real. This, this is really real mm-hmm. right now." And uh, yeah, I mean, he does it, um, and he's a perfectionist. Um, and and uh, like I said, man, when y'all hear this new project, the Old Country Soul, man, it's I'm going to listen to some of the old stuff, just a couple of songs that I listened to because I hadn't heard them until Neil told me about them. And I thought like, I wanted to check it out and know some of I'm like, wow, this is yeah. different and good. Different and good. Yeah, yeah, sometimes things are different, yeah. and you're like, that's, that's yeah, a reason like, why yeah, it's different. Yeah, just trying, yeah. <laughs> but you yeah. you weren't brand new. Like, you you were doing music long before, uh, you know, before you met up with him. Tell us a little bit about how you got started and, and what you were doing. Oh, man. Um, so I'm, I'm, you know, a DJ. Uh, I started off in Tampa Bay, um, you know, started typically, uh, you know, DJing at rec centers, you know, uh, backyard parties, uh, the occasional wedding reception. And then uh, my first job out of college was a, a radio host. So I became a radio host at, at a hip hop station back in uh, Tampa Bay. And uh, the rest is history, man. I start, and that's how I formed all my relationships. You know, uh, me and when Bubba Sparks hit me up to, to go around the world with him to start touring with him, mm-hmm. uh, it was literally, you know, he was ready to just get back into the music, mm-hmm. and he called me out the blue. Actually, he called a mutual friend, and we happened to be at dinner, and I was like, just tell Bubba I said what's up. And he's right. like, oh man, push Trizz on the phone, and uh, and the rest is history on that, man. So. Yeah, I, I've DJed at all the clubs, um, and then you know, out there with Bubba, I've met so many people. I ended up DJing for Yellow Wolf on tour, Petey Pablo. Now you're naming uh, all legit guys, so I mean, that's got to be a feather in mm-hmm. your cap that like these guys reach out to you. These are legit, yeah. like yeah. incredibly talented individuals. And you can hear a little country in Petey Pablo too. I can see that too. Oh, he's majorly country from yeah. North Carolina. Yeah, it's, 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 yeah. his biggest song says North Carolina. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, uh, so, um, yeah, I, I've been around the DJ ranks for a minute, man. I've been able to build my DJ brand. Uh, you know, pretty, pretty, pretty big deal in the DJ uh, society. Right. You know, um, you did a little rapping too, right? Gap with the, you know, with, with you know, with the, you know, uh, with the artist thing. Like a lot of people right now. Uh, would say when you think of second chance, you'll be like, oh, it's Strizzo because that's his DJ, mm-hmm. you know. So, um, 
that's really like been my my thing um with everybody bridging the gap uh yeah. with that man uh but yeah man i've been out there doing my thing I, i've been able to you know crack this dj code and production code uh i went top 40 on the billboard charts with a song called bust a wide open which nice. is a, a pretty big record on the on the radio okay. uh, around the country in uh 2000 and 12. We got a video. Is that is that what this is? Is you can tell us what song this is. We got something queued up here where it's a, it's not a second chance song. This is a Strizzo song. So have a Uh-oh. our guy pull that up here. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that that was one of my uh one of my uh, big club records called I Made It Rain. Um featuring an artist named Shorty uh oh. out of Tampa Bay. That one did really, really good. What we did was uh went to the studio and, and mashed up a uh the Michael Jackson uh, record with Rockwell, the uh, I always feel like right. somebody's, somebody's watching, watching me. Yeah, we did that and and kind of kind of freaked it, and it, it ended up doing good. It ended up going uh, number one in the regional radio market. I did some bureau big things, man. So yeah, I'm I'm all over the place, man. <laughs> so are we, I mean, are we going to see another Strizzo album, like a full length album, or do you just pick and choose your spots? Like, what's what's yeah, next for you? Yeah, so I've been really focused just on pro- production uh, and, and DJing. So producing singles, um, you know, if, if I was to put out a project uh, as a producer, it would be like an EP with like, you know, that would be more beat heavy, um, you know, featuring artists, you know, like, uh, so chances on uh, one of my records that we put out last year that we didn't get a chance to promote uh, because it was a pandemic. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so uh, it's called It's My Party and, you know, nobody was really getting a chance to really party last year. Right. So. But we still have a lot of big plans for that. Um, so yeah, if I put out a, a full project, it'll be production featuring all the the new talent and things right. of that nature. Here's a picture of the two of you together. So, right. um, you know, this is uh, it's funny to me because <laughs> you guys both look like you know like you can you can fight a little you can you could hold your own in a fight right but here's the thing you want to say y'all look like gangster rappers no, no, no. But after, the, <laughs> after the show in richmond strizzo tells me to go um to go do like security for second chance right so i go there second's <laughs> bigger than me and he's all jacked and his he's got an actual like his bodyguard from tour who's like a straight up like like he's actually like he was part of trump security detail stuff like he looks like he has to wipe his ass like from the front he's that like Dang. Yeah, he's low. <laughs> and he's walking through too and uh and so and so i'm standing up there and i was like i i, I remember i just i made second chance laugh like crazy because i go i'm supposed to come up here and do security but i'm pretty sure i'm <laughs> underqualified right like I'm the smallest dude here. So uh, he's doing some uh, like some MMA training now. Is that just for exercise or is he going to try to fight? Look, so uh, last year, a lot, I mean, last year was was a pivotal moment for a lot of people in the world, obviously. Uh, he found his calling with Muay Thai. Uh, so, you know, he really got real deep into Muay Thai. Mm. Uh, and so he started training and he fell in love with it so much that now he owns a Muay Thai gym. So yeah, Chance owns like the number one Muay Thai gym in uh, Northern Tampa Bay, and uh, it's called Payak out in Odessa, Florida. Mm-hmm. If you ever in Odessa, go out there. But yeah, so Chance is uh, really into Muay Thai, which is the martial art. Right. Uh, um, you know the you know uh, so yeah, he does it for real. He owns a gym. Him and his uh, his partner, uh, which is also his coach, and. Uh, so yeah, I mean, we definitely do not have security issues. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as far just, as that's concerned. I'm almost like, is he just but, messing uh, with me? Tell me uh, to go stand over there. You know what I mean? It's just like, uh, you know, I'm like the, the you the bait, Neil. You didn't exactly, know it exactly. So let's go get the little guy, so he can yeah. come save you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, um, yeah, big things, man. You know, big things. Uh, you know, it's it's been a it's been a very interesting uh, year for us. Uh, good and bad, mm-hmm. and uh, you know we just we just ready to get back out here and get get to doing these shows consistently, you know, because yeah. everybody just been kind of tiptoeing back into mm-hmm. what's going on, yeah, you know, and we ready to go full blast like all rocker boosters, <laughs> yeah, you know, so 
That's awesome. So uh, we're happy what, that, uh, uh, that we're happy that you called in uh, and made sure that we were able to do this. But definitely, uh, we know that uh, the second chance has gone through some some personal drama lately. Please thank him for doing these shows. I mean, he could basically go, "I'm not doing anything till next year." But his fans want to yeah. come out August 20th and 21st in Cincinnati and Louisville and see yeah. all the shows. So yeah, yeah, I, I, and 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 when you know when everything started rolling out, man. Uh, you know, I told him because I've dealt with you know artists you know uh, before. Uh, that needed to take personal breaks. And I asked someone, I was like, bro, listen, man, uh, if you need to take some personal break, go ahead, take as long as you need. Uh, but mm -hmm. he literally hit me up in a few days. He was like, look, I'm ready to get back to work. And I'm like, all right. So what's up? You know? So he ready to get back to work. We're going to get back to work, man. We're bringing the energy. Awesome. <laughs> well, we can't wait for that. It's going to be August 20th and 21st. Tickets are at madhattershows.com. And let's mm -hmm. say that there's some folks that, that know Second Chance but just found out that Strizzo has some other stuff. Where can they find your music? Man, uh, you know, first and foremost, man, you know, it's, it's the World Wide Web. You can go to Google. Uh, you can hit Strizzo, S-T-R-I-Z-Z-O. Uh, you can go on Facebook. Uh, I'm Strizzo on Facebook. Uh, you can go on Instagram. I'm official Strizzo. Or you just type in Strizzo because it's just one person that had Strizzo. <laughs> they didn't want to give it up. So I had to put the official in front of it. I was going to ask and about they, the name. Man, I'm talking about, man, like the day or the weakest link. You know what I mean? <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, just Strizzo, man. You know, Twitter, uh, Strizzo. Mm. Uh, just S T R I Z Z O if you want to find me. Uh, on all your music platforms, if you want to hear. My my uh my party production, my club production, um, Strizzo on all music platforms. Awesome. We appreciate you taking some time with us tonight. You got anything to, to wrap up with here? Now I wanted to know where we got the name Strizzo from. You no, know, I was asking people because people are asking about my sweaty hands and it's reads. So what is what is Strizzo? You was a stripper, uh part of your last uh, name. So, uh, so quick uh uh we'll call it long story short, but uh so basically when I was in the seventh grade, I, I needed to take an elective uh, because, you know, I ran track and, mm -hmm. and I needed, to, so I took band. And at the time I didn't know how to play any instruments. <laughs> so I sat, I went to class and the teacher was like, what do you want to play? And I'm like, I don't know what I want to play. So he's like, all right, well, until you figure it out, you're going to be the maestro, right? <laughs> so then, you know, when you're out there on the playground and you, and you, you they, so they break it down to stroke. Yeah. You know, so stroke. You know, your friend's not going to be like, hey, stroke, throw, throw the ball, ball. stroke, you know? throw the ball, stroke. Right. You're right, right. So it started with stroke. And then so my whole little moniker started to be stroke. And then so when I got in the radio, my name was DJ Daddy Stroke. That was my radio name, <laughs> when, you know, like, like in everything. So then I started producing. I, I, I got this great idea. I want to be a producer. So I started producing. Messed around, one of the songs blew up. But when it blew up, the radio station that wanted to play my music, I did not work at. So the other station was like, look, we can't play your music because you work for the competition. And I was like, well, yeah. damn. And then they were like, and we want you to perform at one of our biggest show nights, but we can't let you because you work at the other station. And that was at the time when Snoop Dogg was putting the, the IZZ and everything, yeah. you know, like, for, for shizzle, shizzle and all this other stuff and for shizzle and Jay, yeah and jay-z was like izzo i was like my nizzle I -Z in the middle of stroke strizzo <laughs> Boom. see how that worked out there you go you couldn't play any single instrument in the seventh <laughs> grade and uh now you're a world famous dj with uh big names taking you everywhere, them so. turntables <laughs> okay man and so uh but i've learned how to play the you know uh you know when, when you're producing you got to learn how to dibble and dabble on the keyboard, you know. So now I can sit down and now nah, I can't play live in front of a whole bunch of people. But you can't do Stevie you Wonder. In the studio, I can put some some rhythm together <laughs> and make it sound good. My my band, my uh, seventh grade band teacher would be proud. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> awesome. Well, check out Strizzo online. Go to MadHatterShows.com. Get your second chance tickets, and we'll see you here in a couple weeks. Yeah, get your tickets, man. We definitely looking forward to it, man. We're gonna bring the energy. I hope y'all ready because we 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 like we we we've already started doing a few shows this year, but like now like like the weekend of your shows is like starting like a run, oh, you know okay. like where we're yeah. gonna be out for it and like so we ready man we just we ready to let off you know a bunch of just a year of just you know craziness uh, a lot of personal uh, you know downfalls that we've had to deal with 
And, uh, you know, going out there doing these shows uh, is, is good therapy for us. Great therapy. Awesome, man. We'll see you here in a few weeks. Thanks for calling in. Definitely, right. man. Appreciate y'all. Thank y'all. All right, now. All right. All right. So, All right. DJ Strizzo immediately after Dustin Sims. What are your thoughts on these two gentlemen that Mad Hatter Shows has that worked was, with? That was great. Both of them. I thought they both were awesome. The one that's mega famous off the, all the internet stuff that I don't do. But I, I like hearing about <laughs> it like, and how it works. I need to go works. make a video now. Let's yeah, I'm going to go video way. and I'm going to go viral. I'm like one person viral. <laughs> my, my daughter liked it. And then, Yay! I'm doing good. And then Strizzo, I, I like that. It's always a story with the name. I'm like, right. how'd you get the name? How'd you get the name? And yeah. I knew it was a story. And it was, hey, I could play an instrument. There you go. Competition. Don't never want to plug another competition, dude. <laughs> Let's plug somebody else that we ain't working with. Who's our competition? Let's plug them. Right. Well, even here, you know, we don't. We don't uh, I just told Dustin Sims like, I mean, he's got a, a Sunday show, but we didn't plug it. So, you know, I gave. I let him say that. Yeah, he's gonna be at that place <laughs> but, down the way yeah. at the spot. Because if somebody lives equal distance between that place and where our show's at, we want him to go to oh, our show. That's we, the, you know, that's oh, that's up the street from me. I, I didn't know he was coming there, and we were not gonna tell you. <laughs> But yeah, there's a there's a World Wide Web out there. Check these folks out. Do support them, whether it's a Mad Hatter Show's uh, event or not. Go to the Mad Hatter Show, though. Yeah, we definitely. Hopefully, we, we have more fun. We get uh, we get sweaty hands on some of these lineups too, and it should be a uh, should be a lot of fun. If you come to the the Donnie Baker shows at the end of August, you're gonna get me. Uh, I got some some stand up that Baker. I do. Uh, I got some merchandise I'm taking to to Texas, so it's a. Uh, you know, the, the people start asking me, "Well, where's your stuff?" So I'm gonna start playing along and playing like I'm a comedian too. So I'm the the guy That's with how the I day got job. Like, you don't have anything to say. I'm like, oh, I didn't know you wanted to buy nothing, <laughs> but go. I'll get something. <laughs> so we brought up the, the Mick Foley's gonna be coming up too. Uh, the other guy that uh, that was in the photo with Donnie, um, I'm sorry, with Dustin at that one point, Ginger Billy. We uh, we mentioned him. We got shows coming Ginger up with this Billy. guy. Asked him about his name. Yeah. Now, have you seen him too? Like, <laughs> his, I'm gonna guess his name's Billy, and you can see his beard. So that. That's not a real interesting story, but um, <laughs> I still want to know it. But look at this guy here; he's uh, he's blowing up too with his funny videos. Have you seen any of his yet? No. All right, you gotta I don't watch the internet. But I'm gonna have to get on there. We're old. We got the gray in our beard and uh, kind of so you know what I mean. But these kids, they love this shit. So um, mm. he's got a jacuzzi there for his testicles. That he's uh, that's one of his videos. <laughs> I was wondering what that was. Yeah. Like He's he's got another one that's called the Ron Beer and it's like a souped up. Uh, he, he's a modified. Testicle jacuzzi. Yeah, he's modified. It's like a lawnmower and a and a truck at the same time he's driving around. So all this different stuff that's out there. He's another guy. A that, uh, truck. He puts his wife in his videos. So these guys are figuring out. You know what? Like like get to where everybody is invested in you and they like you. And they care about your family, and they care about like your well, neighbors. Well, everybody told me I should put my and... wife in my comedy show because I told a story what happened over COVID. And I'm like, they said you can't put that in the show. Just don't let her steal the show. You gotta, nah, you gotta make sure that happens. But <laughs> she, she knows she ain't stealing the show, but she knows she's a big part of it. <laughs> there you go. It's gonna make me go out and get a wife. Uh, <laughs> but uh, Bill, not. are you crazy? Probably not. <laughs> um, so Ginger Billy, several shows with him. Um, October the 6th in Vincennes, Indiana. October the 7th in Terre Haute, Indiana. Uh, Lebanon, Tennessee on October the 8th at Cahoots. Um, then the next week, well, we're going to have him in Indianapolis at the Irving Theater on the 14th in Hobart, Indiana, up by uh, Chicago. Uh, oh, Chicago Hobart. Land. They like to claim like they're a suburb. It's still an hour from Chicago, but it's yes. uh, Hobart's going to have him on the 15th. And then uh, jump forward to Wichita, November the 18th. Kansas City, November 19th. So, um, And I think... Um, since I typed this out when we were going to do the last uh, show here, uh, we just added some December dates. So he's going to be in Saginaw, Michigan, and uh, Maumee, Illinois. So um, that's the it's it's funny to, to kind of pause on uh, where he's dipping his balls into the, the thing on the. Oh, well, I was going to say, is he really going to use this thing? <laughs> is he going to put the jacuzzi on? Because I kept saying like, all right, he's running water. So if this if this video gets <laughs> even bigger tonight, I'm going to ask for a cut for Ginger Billy. So there's that <laughs> that thing, and then the uh, November the seventh, we have one single date right now with this guy, but this is exciting for us. We're going to have our first show with Preacher Lawson on Sunday, November seventh. Uh, he's from America's Got Talent. Uh, it looks like a young sweaty hands day right there. Right? Like, have you ever that clean cut? Yeah, you know, that kinda, was a hundred years ago. His, hand, what? his hands mean? aren't glistening though, so that's uh, <laughs> it's, it's clearly yeah, not you. Yeah, he got the abs that I used to have <laughs> that I never had. 
<laughs> but uh, Preacher Lawson uh, blew up on America's Got Talent. Then he went on Britain's Got Talent after that because they were kind of doing the showcase stuff. He's around there touring. So we're super excited to have him in. Same thing, Hobart, Indiana, on uh, November the 7th. And then uh, another guy that's going to be new to Mad Hatter shows, another kind of household name for pe- people that are comedy fans, Christopher Titus. We've got a couple dates with him right now, too. So we're going to have him in Hobart. We're also going to have him in Oshkosh, Wisconsin. So go to madhattershows.com and check out those events. I will be there. There on November the 18th because we've got multiple shows, one of them uh, with Ginger Billy and one of them with Titus. So I'm actually running that show. I'm gonna try to sneak on stage and get a few minutes in on that one. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, the Time Community Theater, and then we're gonna have in Hobart in uh, in December. So um, you a Christopher Titus fan? No, you yet. don't watch no, TV, but you don't know him either. No, this guy even had a sitcom. We need you to. Who, him? Do you have cable, Sweaty Hands? Is that a... I got cable. I got like 782,000 channels, and I I can't watch none of them. (laughs) Christopher Titus even had a sitcom. Is this this guy right here? Yeah, he's been around forever. Yeah, I've seen him. Okay, so you do know him. I'm horrible with names. I go home and get the kid's name like, come here. uh, (laughs) You know your name. (laughs) And a new show that we just announced yesterday on the website, uh, Reno Collier, who was a guest with ours on our first ever podcast. He's the feature act, but the uh, the other guy that he's with is John Reap. Oh, um, I know Reno. So they've got yes, yeah, so you know Reno, but uh, John Reap is the guy he's with. And, um, yeah, they're playing his audio here. That's a little bit different. We got a little little preview of his voice, but uh, yeah. Uh, so it's Reno and John Reap, and we don't have both of them on the mm-hmm. stage. So the next the next podcast, we'll have to play Reno up there on the stage, uh, kind of to keep it even. Yeah, uh, but it's a double headliner show, I was basically. Of him. Double headliner. This guy, uh, he's last mm-hmm. comic standing, I think, and he's a, he's a radio personality and has his followers. So uh, he and Reno complement each other pretty well. We're gonna have him in Bowling Green and in Evansville. So uh, Bowling Green, Kentucky. Kentucky. I was going to say, we're going to have a bowling at green the in the end. Corvette Museum. We're going to be putting uh, Ginger Billy there, too. And I'm gonna still be scared of the Corvette Museum. Are you you really? remember what happened? Oh, when the sinkhole? Yeah. That's the, I'm scared. I don't know. This is live Facebook. I don't know. We should bring that up. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, But you know what? If you're a thrill seeker, come out where you might get sucked but in I know a lot sinkhole. of people in the Corvette Club, so I guess it's good. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we, 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 we our last show in, in Bowling Green, we, we had the, the Southern Lanes Bowling Alley Bar so packed full uh, where you had to find a bigger venue to put Ginger Billy in and uh, John Reap. So Why are you going to one of the caves? I don't know. Can we do... I don't <laughs> think that's an insurance liability. That's a... Uh, Mammoth cave. <laughs> so anyway, lots of shows. Sometimes we've done pro wrestling. Sometimes we've done music. Sometimes we've done uh, sketch comedy. Sometimes we've had a hypnotist before. We've had stage shows with props. And of course, we have a lot of stand-up Magicians. comedians. So check us Stand out. Up. MadHatterShows.com. Uh, find us on uh, on all social medias. So if you if you're on Dustin Sims yeah. page, you're watching this and you're not liking Mad Hatter Shows, mm. we encourage you to do that right now. Do you have a, a Facebook page? It's just you. Yes, I have a Facebook page. It is Sweaty Hands on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, Chit Chat. Whatever it is, I got them all. Find him on any site that's on there. Find Sweaty Hands Day. You can find Neil Snyder Presents. Follow on me. Facebook I need. Well. I need two more followers to get to ten. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna go viral off this shit. They're gonna be like, "That's the guy that talked to <laughs> they're Strizo." Like, they're, they're gonna really like. He really has like nine followers. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we didn't come up though when the internet was like it no. is now. So we don't have those Dustin Sims followers. I'm sure it's that's yeah. the only reason why. So. Um. <laughs> I don't know how to follow people back. I guess you hit the button, follow back. <laughs> All right. Well, we've come to the end of this show. It was a wild ride. We definitely we appreciate you doing some time too. Thank well, you. I, this was fun. Well, I alerted Dustin. It's getting Sims. easier and easier. Mid coitus, we got we got Dustin Sims. We had to get him to put on something to cover his heart on. So that's mm. uh. Um, luckily, we stayed uh, to where we didn't lose the feed because the the camera went down too low or anything. So. A ball <laughs> massager. I came on here and found out about that. I didn't know they had that. Well, now you know. I'm giving you a ball You don't know jacuzzi. what you're going to expect with this. We're planning on being back Wednesday, August the 18th. Uh, there'll be somebody up here on the stage, and, and I think Mick Foley's calling in. So All wrestling right. fans, tune in. Tell your friends. Um, follow us on Mad Hatter Shows, Mad Hatter Podcast. We just do this whenever we do this. Uh, but we would yeah. love to continue to see you. We would love to uh, entertain you when we come to your town. Thanks for tuning in tonight. Thank you all.